Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Krause, and this is our first vocabulary video of the year, and it focuses on the Unit 1, Part 1 notes about evolution basics. Now because it's a video that focuses on vocabulary, it's not going to be super exciting, but it is going to give you a good foundation for some of the more exciting activities that we'll be doing in class. Um, as you are going through the video, you are going to be filling in something called the guided video notes um, for each vocab term that we come across in the video. And as we go through this first one, I will show you how to do it. Okay. Now our first vocabulary term in the notes is evolution. And this term can be found along with all the other ones in this video on the comprehensive vocab list that is a Google Doc posted to the wiki page. So the first term is evolution. Now in your notes, that term was defined as a change in the frequency of particular traits within a population. For each of these terms, I'm going to give you an alternate definition. We're going to call that the definition in the video so that you're aware of the multiple ways the definition can be expressed. So an alternate definition for evolution might be a change in the amount of individuals displaying a particular inherited trait over several generations. So let's go ahead and fill in those two definitions to our guided video notes worksheet. Okay, so this is term number one, which is evolution. Our definition from the notes was a change in the frequency of particular traits within a population. And I'm okay with you just writing word for word what's in the notes. Now the definition that we just got from the video was a change in the amount of individuals displaying a particular trait or a particular inherited trait over several generations. Now, you can choose to download the guided video notes worksheet from the wiki page and type in these definitions, or you can choose to write them out. Either way, you need to have a paper copy of your work in class the day that it's due. Okay. Now, for this one, I didn't give you a memory trick, and I didn't break down the word for you into its parts to clarify its meaning. So we're going to leave the last column blank for this first term, evolution. Moving on to our second term, vocab term number two is adaptations. In the notes, we defined adaptations as characteristics that help organisms be more suited to their environment and better able to survive and reproduce. In the video, I'm going to give you a slightly different definition. An adaptation is a genetic variation, so in other words, an inherited trait that provides advantage an advantage to an organism in a particular environment. Uh, for example, um, let's say you had a population of mice who lived on sand. There is variation in the colors of the mice. Some of them are white, some of them are tan, and some of them are black. In that environment, tan color might be considered an adaptation because it would help the mice to camouflage and stay away from their predators. Now again, for that term, you wouldn't be filling in the last column because I did not give you a memory trick and I didn't break down the word for you. Our third vocab term is natural selection. Okay, the vocabulary term natural selection was defined in the notes as individuals that are best suited to their environment will reproduce. So inherited favorable or successful characteristics will become more common from one generation to the next. And a lot of people equate the phrase survival of the fittest with natural selection, but a better way to say it might be survival and reproduction of the fittest, because in order to be fit, you have to reproduce and pass your traits on to the next generation. Okay. In the video, we're going to define natural selection as competition for limited resources that results in differential survival. So some organisms are more likely to survive 
Therefore, individuals with more favorable phenotypes, which is another way to say physical traits, are more likely to survive and produce more offspring, thus passing traits to subsequent, which means later, generations. So over time, those favorable traits become more and more common from generation to generation. Now for this one, I am going to be breaking down the word. So when I look at the term natural selection, I see both nature and selects. What that means is nature is going to select the individuals with the best traits for that particular environment to survive and reproduce. Now, not a trait that's favorable in one environment won't necessarily be favorable in another environment. For example, if we took the mouse population we were talking about earlier, tan coloring would not necessarily be favorable in an environment that was black slate stone. So if I were to go to my guided video notes for this term, which I believe is term number three, natural selection, where is it? Yes, term number three. Not only would I need to fill in the definition from the notes and the definition from the video, I would also have to fill in the column for breaking down the word. So I'm going to write, just as I had in my video, nature selects the individuals with the best traits in that environment to survive and reproduce. Okay. Now I have a series of images that will kind of help depict natural selection. So with Darwin's theory of natural selection, we start out with the idea that there's variation in a population of organisms. Let's say we have a population of these circular organisms right here, and that there's variation in their coloring. Some of them are green, some of them are blue. This exists in real populations as well. On the right hand side you're seeing a picture of a bunch of mollusks, organisms that have a hard shell, and it appears that their shell patterns differ from organism to organism as determined by their genes, their DNA. Now organisms reproduce, so here we're seeing both the green guy and the blue guy producing offspring, but based on the environment some organisms are going to be more likely to reproduce than others. In this case, it appears that the blue organism is more fit. He's more likely to survive and reproduce than the green organism. So he's going to contribute more offspring to the next generation, as seen in the picture. So over time, the population of circles is going to evolve as the frequencies of these two traits, green and blue, change. It appears that the frequency of blue is going up and the frequency of green is going down. Okay. Our fourth vocab term is fitness. In the notes, we define fitness as a measure of an organism's reproductive success. So if you're more fit, you leave a greater number of offspring that carry your genes. In the video, we're going to define an individual's fitness as the number of viable, which means living, and fertile, which means they can reproduce, offspring that that parent produces. So in other words, a more fit individual has more babies than a less fit individual. And something that I find interesting is that those babies have to be able to reproduce as well for the original parent to be considered fit. P.S. I'm sorry if you hear noise in the background. My dog is trying to get me to play with him. And his father is not home, so I cannot pawn him off on his dad. Right, Teddy? Okay. So our next term is artificial selection. This is one of our pieces of evidence for evolution. In the notes, we defined artificial selection as when humans and not the environment choose which organisms will reproduce based on their traits that are considered useful to humans. They will then encourage breeding among those organisms only. So in the next generation, we'll have a higher percentage of organisms with useful traits. We're going to keep that same definition. So that means that you don't actually have to fill in the definition from the video column on your guided video worksheet. 
We are going to break down the word for this one. And we're going to look specifically at the word artificial. Artificial means not natural, so in this case, nature isn't selecting organisms to reproduce. Humans are. So we're going to write that down in the last column on your guided video worksheet. An example of artificial selection comes from um, the evolution of different vegetables like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, um, that all evolved from a common ancestor plant, which was a mustard plant pictured here. So farmers selected the plants that had, let's say, the largest leaves to survive and reproduce, and over time, plants with large leaves became more common, which led to the development of the kale plant. So, a population of our original ancestor species, the wild mustard, evolved into kale. We then selected for certain traits in the stems and flowers to create broccoli, and so on and so forth. Our next term is transitional fossils. Remember, fossils are organisms that died and whose bodies were replaced by hard minerals and sediment. Um, so their basic body form was preserved in the rock. Now, transitional fossils are defined in the notes as organisms with intermediate characteristics between two species. So they show a change in a group of organisms over time. We have a slightly more specific definition in the video. A transitional fossil is a fossilized specimen that shows traits of an ancient group of organisms and a current group of organisms. So that shows some evidence that members of the ancient group evolved into the current group. If we were to break down the word transitional fossils, we might say the fossils represent a transition between two known groups of organisms. For example, the fossil shown on the left is called Archaeopteryx and it has traits of both ancient reptiles and modern birds. So it represents a transition between a group of ancient reptiles and the birds we have today. And on the right we just have an artist's rendering of what the Archaeopteryx may have looked like. Our next vocab term is homologous structures. Another piece of evidence for evolution, in the notes they're defined as body parts with a similar structure but not necessarily the same function. Um, and there's some evidence that divergent evolution occurred where different species today branched off or diverged from a common ancestor. In the video, we're going to define homologous structures as body parts that are derived or come from a common ancestor but changed over time in different species due to different environments. Now I'm going to give you both a memory trick and a way to break down the word. Our memory trick is when you think of homologous structures, think home. You live at home with your relatives and have common ancestors, so you came from the same place. If we break down the word, homo means the same, indicating that homologous structures are found in species with the same ancestor. Uh, for example, notice we see the basic limb pattern in the middle that's found in a bunch of different mammal species today and they all have wrist bones, finger bones, etc. Um, so the limb bones in the bat, dolphin, and let's say monkey are all similar. They've become a little bit different over time, but that's only because they live in different environments. The dolphin uses its forelimb for uh, swimming, the bat uses it for flying, and the monkey uses it for grasping. So the structures all came from the common ancestor of the mammals, but they're used for different purposes today.